Hello there, my very good friends. On today's wrestling news, our WWE officials already pushing for Alistair Black's return. <laughs> WWE are planning on making SummerSlam WrestleMania caliber. I'm going to tell you about the recently released WWE stars asking for huge sums of money on the indies. And the other recently released WWE superstar who is a hot commodity on the indie scene. I'm Adam Wilborn. And I'm Andy Murray. This is the news. All right, let's kick things off by talking about Alistair Black. And this is quite unbelievable. Wow. This is, this really is something else. So it's a report here from PW Insider's Mike Johnson, noting that certain in certain parts of WWE, there has been some talk that Alistair Black was let go from the company too soon. And now certain people are pushing for the company to re-sign him. So Black was let go from WWE last week on the 2nd of June. He's barely been gone five minutes and already they're thinking, hey, maybe we should bring him back. It's it's quite nuts, really. Um, I mean, there's no word on, you know, whether this will come to fruition or if WWE have extended an offer to him. But man, what a crazy, crazy situation. I mean, letting him go was a weird one in the first place, not just because of how talented the guy is, but because they just brought him back to television to work a program with Big E. And then it was like, nope, sorry, pal, you're gone two weeks later. And now <laughs> there's talk that some people want to bring him back. So Alistair's obviously been very active since leaving WWE. He's been on Twitch uh, like loads of times, mm -hmm. uh, talking about all kinds of things, you know, uh, putting a positive spin on this time in WWE, speaking of his positive experiences there. He wrote some pitched ideas that didn't make it to TV, he spoke about his ring gear, a whole bunch of different things. Um, 90 day non-compete for non-compete clause for him would expire on the 31st of August. So it would be a while before he could go anywhere else anyway. Um, but with regards to just like where he might end up and everything else, um, I think it would be really cool, don't get me wrong, to see Alistair Black in another company, like wrestling fresh people and, and just like working people he hasn't worked before and having cool matches and everything else. And uh, not even from like, oh, WWE sucks kind of standpoint. It'd just be nice to see him do something different, I think. Uh, but ultimately, if, you know, he'd rather go back to WWE, cool, man, that's his choice. Uh, hopefully he just ends up somewhere he's happy and he wants to be and he's going to feel satisfied and everything else. But to me, it's nuts that the company might release a guy that, you know, some people within that company would go, oh, yeah, maybe we should bring him back <laughs> like eight days later or whatever. It's nuts. Yeah, I apologize for laughing at the start of this story. It's very unprofessional me, but it's, it's ridiculous this, isn't it? I mean, I've heard of buyer's remorse, but seller's remorse? <laughs> What's going on as well in the Black household? Didn't they do this exact same thing with Zelina Vega? I granted the situation was different with all the, you know, Twitch stuff, third party. But I distinctly remember us doing this story about, maybe it's, it's a longer period of time, but about like, what, four months after they released her? Or they, you know, came to terms on her release because she obviously just wanted to be able to do what she wanted to do. And they went, you can't do that, we're going to fire you. And she went, okay, <laughs> and just yeah. did it anyway. Um, yeah, they want to bring her, but I'm sure there's another one I'm, I, I can remember. Uh, uh, that has been re released and then they talked about bringing her back. I can't remember who it is off the top of my head. Tavita Devi. That's it who it is. Thank you, Andy. Yeah. Um, yeah, madness. I mean, obviously, WWE should want him back because he's brilliant. And, you know, it, he's been talking about the new theme he's going to have. Like you say, he's been talking about the, the potential ideas that were, were turned down. Some a bit more extreme than others, let's be honest. Yeah. Um, but... I, d I don't know, like, I'd like, in a weird way, I'd like him to go back to WWE because I want him to achieve all the things we knew he could achieve once he came up from NXT. But also, like you say, no hate on WWE. I'm sure some people will do that in the comments. So that's all covered off. Um, I, you know, it would be great to see him anywhere. I'm not just talking about AEW. I'm talking about MLW or AAA or New Japan or Impact, wherever. Like you say, there's so many exciting potential matches for him to have. But... Oh, some uh, this this job baffles me at times. It, not many other sports do you see someone like they don't do this in football. Like sell someone and go, actually, should we get him back? Uh, it's certainly not in a week's time. What a load of bollocks. Anyway, let's move on. Let's look ahead to SummerSlam because WWE are apparently planning on making SummerSlam WrestleMania caliber. 
It's going to be on Saturday, 21st of August, of course. Uh, Wrestle votes on Wednesday. Uh, we're talking about the, uh, the, the the size they want to make this year's SummerSlam. Um, and it continued by talking about how they want Roman Reigns versus John Cena to headline. Uh, Spectrum Sports is John Alba corroborating this story. Uh, he also talked about the fact that Cena's uh, schedule, in case you were concerned about that buggering up everything, kind of eases off in July, making a WWE return more feasible. That was also mentioned by Andrew Zarian uh, on the uh, Cena versus Reigns story on their Matt Men Pro Wrestling podcast. Whether or not Brock Lesnar is involved, I'd hope he was. I'd love him and Bobby Lashley as well. Like, we, we can have both. But yeah, John Cena versus Roman Reigns is an open goal for what is, yeah. you know, like you say, you said this yesterday, shaping up to be a huge SummerSlam, at least in terms of attendance. But you need that big show, especially now fans are back. And what a headliner that would be. And, and you talked about yourself on Twitter, Andy, about go big on Roman Reigns right yeah. now. Yeah, absolutely. I think we fantasy booked this like maybe a month ago um following on from a twitter question we had it's like john cena the story of him going for his record breaking 17th world title reign is a good one mm. uh, um particularly when the opponent is roman reigns because it's a big name that roman reigns can beat and you can tell the story that john cena is not on roman reigns level anymore and uh, now that he's older he's a part-timer he doesn't wrestle as much i think that's a really good pro wrestling story um, it's a great win for Reigns, and also it's something that could conceivably help fill a stadium, which is something WWE need to do with SummerSlam because they're holding it in that massive football stadium in Las Vegas. I'm all for SummerSlam being this year's big pay-per-view. Obviously, they couldn't get full capacity for WrestleMania. So while it was a bigger event, of course, we only had like 20,000 people there every night. And it was cool, and it was great, and it was really nice having those live fans there but it's not the same as a packed out arena, is it? So I'm all for this. I think they should make SummerSlam the most loaded show they possibly can. Get Becky Lynch in, get, um, I was gonna say Ronda Rousey, but she's pregnant, so obviously not. Uh, try and get Brock in if you can, uh, despite, you know, them not seemingly planning on doing so as we report. Work, it, don't worry. Yeah, let's just get everyone in, get everyone in. Uh, have a big old crazy show full of dream matches and make it wild. Uh, Roman Reigns going over in the main event being the right decision for me. Absolutely. And maybe the weather will be better for this one. <laughs> Fingers crossed, eh? Fingers crossed. All right, let's move over to Braun Strowman. He wants a lot of money. <laughs> so a report here from PW Insider's Mike Johnson saying that indie promoters who have reached out to Braun Strowman have been quoted a five-figure asking price to book him on their shows. That's a lot of money to do an indie show, and it likely prices maybe all indie promotions in the United States out of potentially booking the guy. Um, I think this is very interesting on several levels. Braun Strowman is clearly not hurting for money, right? He was on a, a reported 1.2 million a year when WWE cut him. It was reported by Fightful Select that he knew his value at the negotiation table when he was uh, negotiating his last contract with WWE. So he's a guy who's going to ask people for what he thinks he's worth. And he doesn't need the bookings necessarily. Yeah. He could comfortably just sit at home and go wrestling. I mean, sure, if you give me, I don't know, 50 grand, I'll do it. Um, so fair play to him, to be perfectly honest. It's kind of the same thing that Ryback has done since mm. leaving WWE, although, you know, <laughs> Ryback's an interesting guy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, man, I'm not 100% surprised by this. I actually, when Strowman left, I looked at him as a guy who might never wrestle again. I don't know, like, I, I, that's just a gut feeling of mine. Um, Michael Sidgwick put it the other day that maybe WWE would look at bringing him back in a couple of years and that's totally feasible as well. But until then, man, I could just see Braun hanging out, enjoying life. You know, he's made millions. He can do whatever the hell he wants for the rest of his days. He doesn't need to go and work an indie show. Um, he's going to catch a lot of flack for this. But hey, man, listen, if someone is willing to pay you five figures to work an indie show, you've won, haven't yeah. you? Yeah, exactly. I, I, you know, it's it's a big number, but I, like you say, he's probably half saying that because he doesn't want to and half because he doesn't need to. Like you say, he's yeah. got the money saved up. He is set for life, regardless of what happens. Uh, I have no doubt as well, when Sid was talking about uh, him eventually coming back, I have no doubt as well that he's being bombarded with TV and film offers, which don't wreck his already kind of buggered knees a little bit more. I mean, he has to take bumps, you know, in some random country, some random place across the other side of the country. So, 
yeah, but, but best of luck to him. Um, I, I, I completely agree with CJ. The moment he said that, I was like, that makes a lot of sense. He's going to go away from WWE and in two, three years, he'll have this big hero's return. Uh, he's in, in incredible shape right now, of course. It's a real shame that they got rid of him after he's worked so hard uh, on how he looks. But if he stays like that, you know, eventually Vince will get bored with Big Jord or whoever it is in, you know, Jinder's new stable. And they'll bring <laughs> Braun Strowman back because look at him. How did you bugger this up with him? But still, uh, speaking of released talents who are uh, working on the indie scene or not working on the indie scene, Buddy Murphy, he is working on the indie scene. He's a hot commodity, according to PW Insider's Mike Johnson. Uh, obviously, uh, the indie wrestling kind of starting back up again off the back of the ongoing global battle or already has uh, in certain areas. Uh, but Buddy Murphy, unsurprisingly, I mean, these stories are talented wrestlers are in high demand. Who knew it? Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> They're basically a lot of dream matches. Uh, as we discussed when we talked about Buddy Murphy being released and how talented he is, a lot of dream matches on the cards. That is why um, people want to book him, especially, of course, the dream matches on the Australian independent city. Um, people want to take advantage of that. He's using that secret no more dot ink at outlook.com <laughs> email address to continue that awesome. gimmick. Fair play to him. I think he's brilliant. If he wrestled in the Northeast, I would, you know, fight back crowds to go and see him because he's so talented yeah. book more of him please yeah i'm not surprised by this at all i think when the latest round of releases came around buddy murphy from like just a pure work rate perspective from like having these crazy popping matches he was probably the most exciting guy looking at it through that lens i'm not saying he's the biggest star or the most charismatic or anything just that from the in ring the, the, the thought of what he could do elsewhere is really really stunning he could go to the australian indies they've been popping off in the past few years and there's a bunch of exciting matches waiting for him there if you think about it now like with guys like davy richards coming back to the indies and the release wwe talent even potentially brian danielson oh. dipping his toes back oh. in the water hey man this could be a really good end of the year for the indie scene man it's suffered a lot over the past year it suffered a lot over the past few years with all the biggest names obviously signing to bigger promotions and becoming unavailable it's really, I think this is really exciting. Um, the next few months, once these non-compete clauses start running out, are going to be so much fun to follow. Yeah. Um, I can't wait. I really can't wait. As miserable as things, you know, might be on Monday nights for three hours or whatever, uh, just go exploring. Go exploring. Almost every promotion, you know, every kind of regional or independent or cult or whatever promotion in the world has some kind of streaming access. You can watch pretty much anything you want these days. When this thing starts opening back up, if you're fed up of what you're watching on the major networks, go exploring. You will not be disappointed. I think we're in for a great summer and a great end to the year. Exactly. Just like England at the European Championships, wrestling is coming home and I am available <laughs> for bookings uh, on the Australian Indies as a heel or a babyface manager, you flaming galas. I don't know when what they... was, uh, It's coming home, a synonym for going out in the first round. Oh! Oh, oh, God, let's not start this, shall we? Uh, <laughs> Australian bookings, to be honest, Andy. I want to I fly out there and, and be, be be the modern day, day Jim Cornette on, on the Indies. <laughs> Nobody wants to be the anything, him. Jeez. Okay, all right, let's move on to your Twitter questions. At what culture, WWE, of course, you're going to get in touch with us. Robert Stevenson starts us off saying, Howdy, crowd reactions in the Thunderdome are heavily produced by the crowd noise and the monitor. Do you think WWE will continue pumping in sound with live crowds to force slash steal reactions management believes should be happening? Yep. That's my <laughs> short answer. Yeah, I do. I honestly do. Um, I know we're all pining for the noise to come back. We all are. It's not the same without it, but rogue crowds, so-called crowds going into business for themselves, is uh, something that WWE have been dealing with for a long, long time. And they are partly to blame for that. They created this really toxic relationship with their audience, particularly during during the many years of the failed Roman Reigns babyface push. So uh, it's, it's, they've got themselves to blame for this, for me, really. It's not the audience's fault. It's your responsibility to serve up something that they want to cheer for and they're going to accept and not reject. Sharpen up your storytelling. But I can absolutely see within the first two shows, they were doing it at WrestleMania, weren't they? Uh, there was some sweetening of the crowd for certain reactions there. Oh, Hogan. Um, but yes, for sure. Yes, definitely. They will do that. Vince likes to control the narrative. That's one way he can do it. 
absolutely. I would not be surprised uh, if we see leaked footage from fan video saying this is what it actually sounded like when so-and-so came to the ring. Uh, Peter gives us our second question of the day, saying, first of all, lads, uh, thanks for all your effort in the past 12 months or so. I've got some bad news for money. Sorry. I've got some bad news for money in the bank contenders. I get fantasy booking John Cena, but what about bad news, Barrett? The fans loved him. Andy, you know where I stand on this. Yeah, I, I, I get exactly where you're at. I think that would be fun. I think it would be fun. Um, generally, personally, I prefer them to kind of put it on an up-and-comer who they can maybe make uh, with the Money in the Bank briefcase. I know they haven't always historically done that. They attempted to do that with Otis, but maybe not the best idea to go with in that in that instance. Uh, but I would pop huge for Bad News Barrett showing off in a match, don't get me wrong. But I would prefer to see an up-and-comer take that briefcase and really try and elevate the public. I've, I've changed my mind on this a million times, but my current fantasy booking is John Cena is the top of the ladder, about to grab the money in the bank briefcase. The Usos, Jay, probably comes down and costs him because Roman Reigns doesn't want him to have that bloody briefcase whilst he's champion. That leads to their SummerSlam match. And instead, how about we give Sami Zayn the briefcase? Because I bought this yeah. every year and it never it happens. And he's great. <laughs> and can you imagine how unbearable he would be skanking to the ring with a sodding briefcase in his hand? It would be the best and the worst. Yeah, for the briefcase, if you want. I don't, please, please, please. Uh, right, final question today comes from the girl with the kaiju tattoo who says, are birthday questions for the new Stiller thing? If so, my birthday is tomorrow. She said that yesterday. It's today. Happy birthday, the girl with the kaiju tattoo. Uh, I'm curious, aside from the obvious Simon Miller, who in the What Culture Office would you <laughs> want as your tag team partner and what would your team name be? Uh, would absolutely be me and Michael Sidgwick. It's the perfect big man, little man combo. It's the perfect combination of the craft of Michael Sidgwick, the precision, the surgical technique, and just the blundering power of, of the, the chaotic energy uh, that I bring to the table. Uh, the team name would be called Thunder and Blunder for that reason, Ooh. which we fantasy booked on Twitter this morning. And uh, we would beat everybody, in the words of Bob Holly. So there you go. <laughs> uh, I, I immediately went to the other professionally trained wrestler in the What Culture Office, Phil Chambers, of course. You can even have some dynamic where he's Phil Chambers, but when the bell rings, just like Festus, he becomes Hobo Joe. We can have that. Or he can just wrestle all the match and I'll just stand on the outside like almost and just come in and do some big man moves if necessary. Not that I'm strong, I'm just tall. Philly and the Willy, I mean, it's it'll work. <laughs> Or me and Nicholas Beauty in the Boot, obviously, is the other team name. But let us know your pairings and suggestions uh, in the comment section or on Twitter at WhatCultureWWE. And we'll move on to today's and finally. Uh, and I just saw this on Reddit Squared Circle and I thought I wanted to share it because it was just, it really warmed the cockles of my heart and I hope it will for you too. Uh, Broby42 commented, uh, presumably on Amanda Hoover's uh, Instagram, saying, uh, My friend was asking why Negative One was off TV for a few weeks. And I said, I bet the grades were slipping. And mum said, No more going on Dynamo until these grades come up. Uh, Amanda Huber, uh, who's just a lovely woman, uh, responded, 100%, he stopped doing his work, so he lost privileges. I don't make any money off appearances he does for AEW. It's purely for fun. It's his favorite place in the world and a reward for hard work. He managed to finish his school year with all A's and B's despite slipping up a bit. I'm very proud of him. First of all, well done to Negative One for, for nailing that school work. And second of all, Andy Murray, I need to see Johnny Hungy helping Negative One with his homework <laughs> on Dynamite. This is all this is all just such heartwarming stuff, isn't it? Born of tragedy, of course, the horrible passing of, of John Huber at uh, at the end of the year. And uh, the, the more I learn about the Huber family, I just think they just seem like the nicest people of all time. And uh, this is delightful stuff indeed. I love I love seeing negative one on television. Uh, on Dark this week, he shoved Rick Knox out of the ring pretty much and, and Excalibur flipped out on commentary. It's good wholesome stuff. Shout outs to the whole family and rest of peace. Yeah, just heartwarming the way the entire AW family have really taken them in. But yeah. Give me Johnny Hungy doing homework, please. Hell yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, right, let us know your thoughts on that and all of today's news stories in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And subscribe to What Culture Wrestling on either iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcast from for daily wrestling podcasts. Plus, you can let us know your thoughts and Twitter questions on Twitter at What Culture WWE. Or actually, there, follow both of us. You can follow Andy Murray at. At Andy H. Murray, the H stands for Happy Birthday, Diona Perrazzo. What a year she's had since Ooh. leaving WWE. Good choice. Yeah, very good. Follow me on Twitter at Adam Wilbur. Follow us all at WhatCultureWWE. But for now, my thanks to Andy Murray. Thank you for joining us. And we will see you soon.